chapter 16, if you will. We'll continue our survey of Paul's epistles. <clears throat> I made the comment on Thursday night that before you try to explain other parts of the Bible to someone, what you want to do is you want to establish first what God is doing today. Genesis through Acts is God's word, and all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. There is profit if you go back there. But when you understand rightly dividing the word, you do understand that your present doctrine, your, your particular teaching, doctrine means part, part, com, compartmentalized teaching, is found in Romans through Philemon, the epistles of the Apostle Paul. Okay? So you can study Genesis through Acts. I do. You do. We go through it all the time. We'll be in the, those books today. But when you study them out, even if you take what they call spiritual application, in some passages you can. Paul goes and says, as does also saith the law, but to interpret these passages as to you or about you, that's not rightly dividing the scriptures. The passages of God's word that are ex about, about you and to you as Gentiles in the church, the body of Christ, living in the dispensation of grace, the mystery, are Romans through Philemon. But also there's another pa uh, a part of scripture called Hebrews through Revelation. Hebrews are the Jewish people. Hebrews through Revelation. Now, historically, th th there's a historical and a prophetic part to all of these books. There's the historical part, where they were written two th nearly 2,000 years ago. But then there's a prophetic look, especially to the uh, Hebrew epistles. Those things have to take, they, they, they primarily have to do with a time that's future. Now, when you're studying your Bible this way, it will make sense. If you don't, you're going to confuse things. I get questions every day from people through email about the Bible, Bible questions. I spend about five hours studying the Word and the other one's just answering emails about Bible questions and things like that. Well, what's going on is the answer to the questions is 99% is they are, they're not rightly dividing the Word of Truth. They're mixing law and grace and prophecy and mystery. Once I show them how, to, how the Bible is written past, present, and future, they start to get it if they really want to des desire it. We're in the book of Romans because this is particular doctrine to us and about us. These are the most important passages I've ever taught. I did the math, and over the years, I've, I've taught over 5,000-something messages through radio, on, on the TV, and preaching. And I, I thought about it. There's nothing more important than what we're, what we're learning right now, the books of Romans through Philemon. This is the doctrine that you're going to be judged on at the judgment seat of Christ. That's why we're looking at Romans chapter 16. Now, where we left off was with a woman named Phoebe, chapter 16, and look at verse 1. Romans chapter 16 and verse 1. I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is the servant of the church, which is in Sincrea, that ye receive her in the Lord as becometh saints, and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she have need of you, for she have been a secure of many and of myself also. Now, we've, we looked at her last week. Paul is coming down to the end of this wonderful handbook of salvation. The theme of the book of Romans is to explain the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ to Gentiles. What happened at Calvary that affects you and I today? Well, it's salvation. By grace through faith plus no works, Gentiles receive salvation. But also, there's a doctrine associated with this grace dispensation called grace. No longer is God dealing with man under the law of Moses under performance-based acceptance. Paul explains that, and as he winds down the epistle, he is now dealing with certain people who have been instrumental in his ministry. Now, the name Phoebe, I want you to remember these names. As, as we cover these names each week, I told you names in the Bible are important. Usually, when we read these names, we just kind of gloss over them, like, oh, okay, there's Phoebe, there's Priscilla and Aquila, there's uh, Apennatus, you know, and, and they're mentioned in the scriptures. But when God mentions a name or a place in scripture, there's a meaning behind it. See, there's a meaning. When we're going through the book of Acts, I stop to show you what all these names mean because they add up to something. Well, so too all the names in chapter 16 of Romans will add up to this 
beautiful picture of something. You got to be with us week after week. Phoebe means radiant, shining, and pure. That's her name. That's going to mean something because we're going to add up all these names and we're going to put them together. I think some of you all were with us when we were way back in Genesis and all those names in, in the book of Genesis, uh, it, 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 it had this picture of the Lord and what he would do in a prophetic program. Well, what we're going to see, I'll give you a, a little bit uh, pure. What we're going to see is all these names are going to add up to a beautiful picture of something that the Lord is doing in the dispensation of grace. OK, so Phoebe, our sister. Now, we saw that she was a servant, a minister, a minister as it were, of, the, of the, the church, which is in Sincrea. By the way, Sincrea, thank you, John. We have the map now. That was Brother John's idea. I love this. It, oh, you might have a map. Yeah, thank you. That was even better. If, you, if you're on your table, you might have a little map, which is a, a, a replica of this large map. I love this idea because now you can see in the book of Acts, and, and when we're going through 2 Thessalonians and, and Romans, through Philemon, the apostolic journeys of the Apostle Paul. Sincrea is out here. It's a city of Corinth. It's, it's out in that area, okay, right over here. Here's Jerusalem. Paul has made his way all through this a area. Notice that he's going west. The gospel of grace is heading west, far hence to the Gentiles. Paul's going to end up way over in Rome, Italy, over here. Now, that's significant because what you see is with the fall of Israel, you got to be with us in the book of Acts, the fall of Israel is taking place. God is leaving the headquarters of that kingdom church, Jerusalem, and he's making his way west out to the Gentiles, far hence. And they didn't have airplanes to take them. Paul did this by boat. And we're going to see that boat in Acts when we get in the book of Acts. When Paul was on that ship, Brother Dean was talking to me earlier, he was kind of jokingly just talking about the ship. But that ship in, in the book of Acts that Paul is on, it's a type of the, the body of Christ. And as the body of Christ goes through the dispensation of grace, all the winds of doctrine are pounding it, yet Paul is still there waiting for people to listen to him. And God would say, you know, anybody who listened to Paul, I'll say, stay with Paul, you'll be all right. And you start to see, and when, we show, when I show you that ship going through the book of Acts, later in Acts, it's a type of the church, the body of Christ. Well, Sincrea is a city of Corinth where Paul wrote the little book of, of uh, excuse me, where Paul wrote the book of Romans. Phoebe is the woman who God used to take the epistle of Romans from Corinth to Rome. She took it from here to there, okay? Now, why is that important? Look what it says about her. Ch chapter 16, verse 1. I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, she's of the household of God, the family, which is a servant of the church, which is at Sancria. Uh, the name Sancria means small grain. That's important, too. So if you keep a record of this, Sancria is equal to small grain. That's important as well. Okay? Sancria is small grain. So she's of... She's of uh, uh, a servant of the church which is in St. Korea. Now look at verse 2. That ye receive her in the Lord as becometh what? Saints. And that ye assist her in whatsoever business she have need of you. We'll stop right there. That issue of receiving her in the Lord. In chapter 14 and 15, Paul has been dealing with receiving one another in the Lord. Um, look at chapter 14, verse 1. Chapter 14, verse 1. Romans 14, verse 1, him that is weak in the faith, receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. Um, in the church at Rome, there were Jews. I think the weaker brothers were the Jews who, were, who had in their mind and hearts a knowledge of the bondage of the law of Moses. Paul was one of those a long time ago. Well, the Gentiles who are more free in their thinking, because they're just out carnal Gentile, they, they, they would get on their more, their weaker brethren because of the religion that they had to come out of. I see that dealing with some of the saints. Uh, there's a religious bondage that religion put on some of the saints who come to know the grace message that it takes time to, to, to let go. I come from the opposite. I, I come from being free. See, I, I know the freedom of God's grace and the graciousness, 
And it astounds me that the mindset that Paul says, casting down imagination and every thought that, uh, taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Well, when you come from a religious background, you have to do that. You, you're weak in your faith, and what Paul wants to do is release you and free you from that. Well, as you, as you deal with the weaker brother and the person who doesn't know the grace message as much, you're to receive them. Chapter 15, verse 1. We then that are strong, speaking of strong in the faith, ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Our job, if you believe you're a, weak, a stronger brother, you're to deal in long-suffering with those who you believe are the weaker brother. What makes you strong in the faith is not how much knowledge you have, but how much you love. Your job is, is to receive and love the, the, the weaker brother, okay? Look at chapter 15 and verse 7. Wherefore, receive ye one another as Christ also received us to who? The glory of God. We're to receive one another to the glory of God. So as this female, now by the way, why would he say it like that? Well, in the Roman Empire and the Mediterranean culture, women didn't have the highest status in, 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 in society. In fact, it's not until you get to Pauline Christianity that you see women exalted back to their natural uh, uh, status where God created them to be the complement of the man, but, but not lower than the man. They're equal with men. They're just subordinate as far as the, the, the order of creation, okay? But, but God made men and male and female in his image. Well, in the Roman Empire, that wasn't true. In the, in, in, in the culture of that Mediterranean culture, that wasn't true. Women were that much above slaves, but not, not in the Christianity. Christianity exalted the female in the image of God, okay? So what you're going to see is it's, it's interesting that God will use a female to take the, the letter from Sincrea there to Rome, okay? Now, that's important. Now, why was, she, why was she going there? Well, look at verse 2. Verse 2, that ye receive her in the Lord as becometh saints. I want to I show you Paul uses that term uh, before. Hold your hand and, and, and go to Ephesians 5, this issue as becometh saints. Here's how saints ought to act. Ephesians chapter number 5, if you will, look at verse 3. Ephesians 5 and verse, let's start at verse 1. Ephesians 5, verse 1. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Now the therefore is being kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another. Verse 2, Ephesians 5, 2. And walk in love, see, walk in love. As Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Christ offered himself to God. We are to offer our own selves to God as living sacrifices on the behalf of others. Verse 3. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Um, there's, there's, saints means to be set apart unto God. When you get saved, you, God ch takes you out of the power of darkness, your old life, and puts you into his son, the Lord Jesus, and expects you to walk as who you are in Christ. Now, it's not you trying to do it in the flesh. It's you coming and growing in the doctrine. The reason we meet is so God can renew your mind. He'll give you the power both to will and to do for his good pleasure. But you are to walk the way Christ walked in love. Use not your liberty as an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another, Galatians 5.13. So that's what God desires. There is a righteous conduct for the grace believer. When Paul says the whole armor of God, you put on the breastplate of righteousness, that's faith and love. You have faith in Christ and love towards all the saints. We're to walk pleasing to God, okay? So go back to Romans now, Romans 16. This woman, Phoebe, our sister, she was a businesswoman. That's, that's, that tells me something about her personality. She had that A-type personality, a go-getter. And she didn't, she wasn't, she didn't let things stop her too, too, too much when it came to, to serving the Lord and, and, and providing for Paul. I'm telling you, God used this woman and her soft heart towards the Lord and Paul to provide for the Apostle Paul's ministry. Paul was supposed to be free to minister. He says in 1 Corinthians 9, God set the minister free to labor in the word and doctrine. The Corinthians were slack concerning giving and receiving. They didn't supply for Paul's physical needs, as they should. But you had particular saints like her and Epaphroditus and others who would use their labor to provide for the Apostle Paul's needs when the other people 
didn't. Let's look at chapter 16 of Romans verse 2. That ye receive her in the Lord as become its saints, and that ye assist her in whatsoever, what's that next word? Business she have need of you. She was a businesswoman. And it's, it's my thought that she was, would go around these different regions doing her business. Somehow she was on her way to Rome to, 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 to take care of business. Paul, a um, couple of things. She took the letter to the Romans, this letter here, scripture. But also, he's telling saints that when it comes to other saints, we ought to help each other. You really want to give your business first to other saints, or if they're saints who have need, you want to use your, your finances and your, your resources to help other saints. We need to start at home first. That's what he's saying. So here she is. If Whatever she was selling, Paul says, you guys, if you can afford it, buy it from her. Provide for her. She's providing for the saints. Um, when he says, look there, he says, and ye assist her, verse 2, in whatsoever business she have need of you. Why? Verse, verse uh, 2. Four, further explanation. She has been a secure. That word sakura or a, a succorer, they call it. It means someone who brings help to another, financially particularly. Um, someone who assists in a time of need or distress or difficulty to give aid and relief to others. Someone who has care and concern for the downtrodden. That was this woman here. Basically, she used the money that she had to look around for needs. The first need was, I need to take care of the Apostle Paul. She says, I'm going to make sure the Apostle Paul, as much as I can give to his ministry to provide for him, and she helped the saints. This woman used her money the way God would have you use your money for the grace message. Let's look at some of this. She was a, a businesswoman of wealth and influence. Go with me, hold your hand there, and go to Proverbs 31. Let's look at the Proverbs 31 woman. Proverbs 31. This passage is very popular in Christianity. I don't know if you ever read it. We're just going to kind of review it. Proverbs 31. God created the woman, the female, to assist the man, but to, to, to do it with gusto, okay? And what you're about to see, here's an Israeli woman who is called the virtuous woman. She was a businesswoman, too. So when I think of Sister Phoebe, I think about this woman here. Pro Proverbs 31, look at verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? It's a woman full of virtue, love for the Lord. For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. That's a wonderful thing as a man when your heart can trust safely in your wife. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Verse 13, she seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. Notice that she, she's, she's, she's very productive. Uh, verse 14, she is like the merchant's ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She, she riseth up while it is yet night, I call Krista my uh, Proverbs 31 woman. She gets up before it is, it's light outside at 4 o'clock in the morning. And she's not a morning person like me, okay? So I, I joked with her. I said, you're the Proverbs 31 woman. Chapter 31, verse 15. She rises also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and portions to her maidens. Uh, she, she's under the delegated authority of her husband, and she's, she's ministering to the household. Uh, through her, 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 the work of her hands, her work. Verse 16, she considered the field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands, she planted a vineyard. So she's out there and, and amongst the, the people of Israel, and she, she's, she's conducting business. Verse 17, she girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. When Krista's working out and she wants to give up, I say, Proverbs 31, 17, get to going. <laughs> and you think I'm joking. I, these verses always come to mind. And she laughed at me. She girded her loins with strength. I said, those are your abs. Do your abs. And she strengthened her arms. There's your curls, girl. Keep going. <laughs> Verse 18. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. This woman gets up early and works throughout the day. She's a strong woman who loves the Lord. That's the point. Keep reading. She layeth her hand to the spindle, and her, her hands hold the distaff. Uh, that's her with the, with the fabrics, making, making clothing and things. Verse 20. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor, yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She's like uh, Phoebe. She assists others who are downtrodden. 
She is not afraid, verse 21, of the snow for her household, and all her household are clothed with scarlet. There's a woman who works in Minnesota. She's not afraid of the snow for her household. Get up and go in the snow. Y'all know, know I'm goofy. But look, that's true, though. She's not going to let a little bad weather stop her progress. Look, this is what's going on. Verse, verse 22, she maketh herself coverings of, of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. She, that's, this is, um, t she's a woman of influence, and so she, she, she dresses accordingly. Verse 23, Krista loves fashion. She likes this passage here. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. Her husband is a ruler in Israel. He, he, is, a, he is a godly man who's sitting, uh, when he says in the gate, uh, Israel at the gates of the city is where you find the elders, and that's where you, they, 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 the judges sit there, the rulers. He's an elder of the land. Verse 24, she maketh fine linen and selleth it, and delivered girdles unto the merchant. So she's out there in the marketplace. This is like Phoebe. Verse 25, strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. This is a godly woman who has the, uh, that inner beauty, that inner strength. Verse, verse 26, she opened her mouth with what? Wisdom. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. By the way, that's a woman who knows the word of God. Now, in our day, the wisdom of God is, is the grace message. A woman should be able to articulate God's grace message for today. That's how she opened her mouth with wisdom today. Verse 27, she looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. She's not lazy. She, she desires to, to take care of her, 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 her family, both inside and outside. Verse 28, her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. Children are to honor their mom and to bless, and to bless, her, bless her for her hard work. And her husband also, he praises her, both to her face and to others. That's why I mentioned my wife. I, I love her and I want to praise her. Verse 29, many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Now watch this. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is what? Fame. You know, we live in a society where women are trying to be beautiful outwardly. And that's, that's fine. God put that in the female. The Bible talks about them painting their faces. It says before Jezebel died, she painted her face. Then she fell out a window and the dogs ate her up. Beauty is vain. Because I don't care how beautiful a woman is, guess what? Time marches on and those bags come and those lines come. And that little pouch comes. And you know, ladies. Hollywood wants to just fix the outside, but this woman has beauty inside and out. That's the thing. Beauty, beauty is vain, verse 30, but a woman that feareth who? The Lord shall be praised. Ladies, if you want to please God, it's that gentle and meek and quiet spirit on the inside, that heart to love the Lord and his word today through Paul. She shall be praised. Verse 31, give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. That woman, she's, she's a woman who's zealous of good works of grace today. Okay, that's the point. Why did I show you this? Because that sister Phoebe, she went out there and says, Paul, my apostle, whatever you want me to do, whether it's my time, my treasure, my talents, I'll do. And, and that's an encouragement for you ladies. Go back on our way. Let's go back to the New Testament. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Chris and I dream every once in a while about winning the lotto. And we, we, we joke about what we would do to money. And I, I start saying, I'll pay off bills, I'll do this and all this. She goes, no, you're not. What you'll do is you'll just buy airtime on, on, the, on, the, on the TV and spend all that money paying off the saints' debt and having the grace money. I said, you're right, you're right. That wouldn't be a bad thing. I'd pay all of you guys' debt, clear it out. And then we'd get on TV, prime time. <clears throat> but God want to use small things, so that's fine. But... If you do have some money, 1 first, first Timothy chapter 6, if you look at verse 17, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17, speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ, verse 15, which in his times he shall show, who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who only have immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see, that means he's God, to whom be glory and power everlasting, amen, Charge them that are rich in this world. These are people who have finances. That they be not, what's that word? High-minded. To be high-minded 
is to look down on those who aren't as blessed financially as you are. The rich of our, of our world does do that, don't they? They look down on the poor of society. Well, Paul says, don't you be high-minded if you're a saint and you have some more money than someone else. Because in the body, you have all types. You have those who are poor than dirt, and you have some, very few, who are rich, like Philemon and others. And you have male, female. You had, in Paul's day, bond or free. You had servants. You had masters. The body of Christ consists of all, and we're brethren. Look here. Verse 17, that they be not high-minded, nor trust, nor trust in what type of riches? Uncertain riches. Don't we know that in our day? Huh? That 401k going, I know Christmas is. I tell her, honey, don't even look at it no more. Don't even look at it. Because she's looking at it, and it's going down, 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 down. She works at a financial company, and has a, we have a financial advisor. And, yeah, I say, honey, uncertain riches. Don't you trust in those uncertain riches. That's, that's uncertain riches. Don't depend on and rest in your 401k and even your job, because that's even shaky. Krista went through that just a couple weeks ago. I said, well, they, if they let you go, they let you go. The Lord will provide. We'll, we'll do something else. You're to trust the Lord. Watch this. Be not uh, high-minded nor trust in, verse 17, in uncertain riches, but who? In the living God. See, he's the living God. He's alive. He hears your prayers. He'll, he's going to provide. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now watch what God does. Who giveth us scarcely all things to enjoy. Oh, richly. God will make sure. That's why I told you, the more you follow the Pauline Grace message, you will suffer the rejection of it from religion and from the laws, but your life, you would have that abundant life what Paul says, he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. You can have that everlasting, abundant life now when you obey the apostle Paul. See, your life is a field where you sow seed. It hurts sometimes when someone gets saved and they say, well, Brother Ron, I got this life that I built up the past 40 years of mess. And now I'm trusting the Lord Jesus Christ, but I'm still dealing with the mess. I say, because you sowed that seed. There's a law of sowing and reaping. What you do is you dig up the old store and you plant good seeds of grace and then that becomes the harvest. And you look back and your whole harvest is just the blessings of the grace message. That's life. It's sowing and reaping. And so I, told, I tell them it's going to take time for you to deal with the consequences of bad decisions, but you just keep sowing good and eventually you're going to look back and all the bad seed is gone, uh, all the bad crop is gone and you have a, a, a good crop. Well, that's what he's talking about here. God will give you everything richly to enjoy. Verse 18, that the rich, that they do good, that they be rich in what? Good works. Hey, if you're rich, you, you got the resources to do the good works of God's grace. Ready to distribute. That word ready to distribute is literally walking like this, looking for needs to fill. I can't do it financially. Not yet. Eventually, as the Lord, I just need time. But what I do, whatever, much as lieth in you, whether it's spiritually, I can relieve some burdens. Nothing is better when I get an email or phone call with somebody who got a Bible question, because I'm, I'm able to answer those things and dig into the word and give it to them. Now, you might be, not be able, to be able to do that with the Bible, but maybe you can fill some saints' needs financially. That they be ready to distribute, verse 18. Willing to communicate. Uh, communicate has to do with going back and forth. Distribute has to do with filling needs. But to communicate, that has, that's regular. Communicate is a regular co conversing with the message of grace. My livelihood and the livelihood of my wife and child is dependent on you all secondarily. It's really God, but he, he provides through the saints. And so is our ministry. And as you guys give faithful communicate, that's, that's what Paul is talking about. Verse 19, here's why you do it. Laying up in store. He's talking about the judgment seat of Christ. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. Now, what's that? What Paul is saying is the motivation is understanding you're investing. Now, if you invest in certain stocks and bonds and these things, that stuff is up and down in our economy. But if you invest in the grace message, that's something that's going to be just 
uh, effectual in its increase. When you invest in a grace message with your money, you got a sure foundation waiting for you, a reward from the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's not like our stock market today. It's just constantly going up. It's an effectual working. That's what he's saying. Go back to the book of Romans chapter 16. That's who Phoebe was. She was that businesswoman. And ladies, she's a fantastic woman to think about as you serve the Lord in whatever you do. Krista thinks about that. She's not a morning person. She gets up at 4 o'clock. And because of the ministry, she, she, she helps the household. And she remembers things like that. She says, you know what? You can serve the Lord in that capacity, okay? Look here. Watch this. Verse 3. Start at verse 2 at the end. For she has been a secure, that's a, a helper. She's given aid of many. But look at the, re the rest of verse 2. And of myself also. This was a female who in the body was personally responsible for the needs of the Apostle Paul. He's at Corinth. She's at Corinth. She's doing work there, and she's making money, and she gave it to Paul. Some of you know. He says, Sister Phoebe, I need you to do a favor. You're heading to Rome, right? Yes, sir, I'm heading to Rome. Here's the epistle to Romans. Will you please take this epistle? She was bringing scripture out to the saints. That's what she did. Now, I want to, with the time we have left, move on to verse 3, because there's an important couple here. Now, see, the first one was a woman by herself. This one is a, a woman and a, and a husband, a, a woman and a man working together, named Priscilla and Aquila. Let's look at it, verse 3. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my what? Helpers in Christ Jesus, keep reading, who have for my life laid down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Now, I love this couple, Priscilla and Aquila. They are mentioned six times in Scripture. Six is the number of man. God is telling couples, you ought to be just like them. Chris and I, this is our, our, our life together. Sometimes we joke and call each other Priscilla and Aquila because our goal is to be like them. We study these passages out as a couple. We do. And the reason is because when you see them, they're always together. They're never apart. By the way, the, the reason they, they put, uh, Paul wrote her name first, Priscilla. Let me put this on the board for you, what her name means. These names mean something. <clears throat> the name Priscilla She's also called Prisca. One is just the diminutive of others. Timothy is Timotheus, Timothy, Silas, uh, uh, Silvanus, and then Aquila. Priscilla means ancient. Aquila means eagle. Again, we're going to be adding Phoebe, radiant, shining, pure, sent clear, small grain, ancient, eagle, okay? So just keep those in mind. We're going to add them all up when we get there. So let's look at Priscilla and Aquila. Um, they were a couple who from the beginning to the end were faithful to the Pauline Grace message. I am waiting to meet them at the judgment seat of Christ. I, there are a few people that I, I just particularly go, hmm, can't wait to meet them. Me and Krista, we say we want to walk up to, holding hands and walk right up to them. Now, we'll be sister and brother in the Lord, but we'll, 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 we'll be close. We'll remember our marriage. We want to meet that couple, okay? Let's look at them. The first time we see them, we'll look at them and then we'll conclude. Uh, first time we see this couple uh, is in Acts chapter 18. So hold your hand in Romans. Go to Acts chapter 18. Acts chapter 18, and look at verse 1. And after these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth. Uh, direct your attention either to your map or up here. Uh, man, I love this map. Paul is here in Athens. 
He's, finished, he's working on his apostolic journeys, so he goes over to Corinth, okay? So they're right there. They're on the same, same uh, land mass. He just goes right on over, okay? He's, he's heading west, okay? So he departs in, um, from Athens and came to Corinth, verse 2, and found a certain Jew named Aquila, there's the man, that's the, the, the husband, born in Pontius, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla. Now, they're in Italy. They leave Italy and come over to Corinth. And the reason why is there. There was a, there was a civic decree from the, from the leader, verse 2, uh, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and, and came unto them. So the part, of, the part of Italy they are in is Rome. So what they do is they, most likely, they just took a ship from the, through the Adri Adriatic Sea, come right on down to Corinth, okay? Keep reading. Chapter 18, verse 3. And because he, that's Paul, was of the same craft, he abode with them and wrought, for by their occupation they were tent makers. Now, again, this is early in Paul's ministry. As a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee, two things happened. They taught their children the law, especially their sons, the law of Moses and the prophets, the Bible. But then the father had a craft that he would teach the son. Uh, when you think about homeschooling in our, in our day, you, you teach the child till they get to a certain age, and then if you don't want to send them to the universities and all that stuff to confuse them, you just, you just find out whatever they can work, nursing trade, technical school, skills, give them some type of skill so they can make money. Well, that's what the Jews did. Paul, his father, taught him how to be a tent maker, which just hap so happens to be the same trade, craft, of Priscilla and Aquila. So they were probably going around, that's how, that was their business. They would make tents, okay? Tabernacles is what they were calling in the Jews, that type of deal, okay? Things. Paul before, uh, we, we learned that the Corinthians weren't doing their job in providing for his, for his needs. So early in his ministry, and that usually happens in ministry, you're, 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 you're full-time in a secular job, and then you're kind of doing a little bit. But as that increased, you're half-time in that, and you're doing this more. What, same with Paul. Then eventually he was just full-time. That's what was happening here. But until that time, he wrought temporarily as a tent maker. Verse 4, and he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath, and persuaded the Jews and Greeks. So Paul would go into the synagogues on the Sabbath, stand up and read the law and the, and the prophets and teach Christ to both the Jews, religious Jews, and those Greeks who were there, proselytes, okay? From that, from that gathering, people would get saved and become members of the church, the body of Christ. That's how Priscilla and Aquila come. They were Jews who heard the gospel of grace that Paul preached, Paul preached to Jews that Jesus was the Christ and that he died for their sins. They believed it, and they became part of the church, the body of Christ. Verse, verse 5. And when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, you got your, your map again here. Look real quick. Priscilla and Aquila come from Rome. Paul's in Corinth. Um, Timothy and uh, Silas, Silvanus, come from Macedonia, right on down, Okay. Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. And when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his raiment and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean from henceforth. I will go into the Gentiles. Um, for time's sake, go down to verse 18. And Paul, after this, tarried there yet a good while and then took his took leave of the brethren and sailed thence into Syria. You can see Syria on your map. And with him, who's with them? Priscilla and Aquila. Aquila. Um, what happened was these two Jews, who had a lot in common with Paul being Jews and also being of the same crab, they probably had a natural friendship. But the biggest thing they had in, in common was they believed the gospel of grace that Paul preached about the Lord Jesus, okay? They get saved, and from the get-go... They're laboring with Paul. You see that? See, when you first get saved, you're supposed to be with Paul on down. Very few people get that chance. Most of you all get saved in denominations and then learn Pauline truth, write the vision down the road. 
There are very few of us who actually get saved and follow. Well, that's what happened with these people. That's a blessing. Because usually it's the ones who get saved right into it who endure the sound doctrine, I've noticed. When I talk to people who get saved right into the grace message, they're usually the ones who endure. It, it, it's, it seems harder for those who have that uh, denominational pull on them from time past to endure. But you can. You can. Through much prayer and belief of the word. So that was Priscilla and Aquila. They believed the grace message and went right on through, okay, with Paul. Let's look at some of that. Uh, look at verse 24. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. So now they're all at Ephesus, and a, and a gentleman named Apollos, you've seen Apollos in 1 Corinthians. He was born at Alexandria. He was a Jew born outside the land, just like Aquila from Pontius. He was an eloquent man. He was a great speaker, and he was mighty in the scriptures. The scriptures there is the Old Testament. Remember, Paul is now just starting to write his epistles. They don't have the completed word like you and I. He's talking about the Old Testament. He was a Jew. He knew the scriptures. He was mighty in it. He came to Ephesus, verse 25. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord. That's what the Messiah, the way of the Lord. And being fervent in spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord. Now watch this in verse 25. Knowing only the baptism of who? Here's what happened. During the Lord's earthly ministry, it's evident that, that Apollos was out there in Alexandria, Egypt. He wasn't exposed to the Messiah's ministry and any of this stuff happening here for whatever reason. He still believed the, the, the scriptures. He, he knew the baptism of John. He was waiting on Messiah. What's going to happen is Priscilla and Aquila are going to tell Apollos that Messiah has arrived, preach Christ, but also the change in the program. Watch this. Verse 26, Acts 18, 26. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. So Apollos is up there preaching what little bit he does know, whom when... Aquila and Priscilla, the husband and wife, had heard. Y'all see what they're doing? They knew that Jesus was the Christ, but they hung around the synagogue so that they could share that truth. So they listened to Apollos, and they looked at each other and said, Honey, this guy, he got a soft heart towards the word. Mm -hmm. I bet if we talk to him about Paul's message, he'll believe. And can I tell you, that don't happen a lot, even in our day, but there are some people that I talk to who don't know the word rightly divided, but I can tell they care about the verses, and I go, I got somebody who, who I can explain this to. That was Apollos. It's nothing better than that feeling of showing somebody and they see it. The person got to love the word of God, though. They can't be twisting verses and stuff. Now watch what, watch what Apollos did, verse 26. And when he began to speak boldly in a synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla heard, they're listening to him, oh, I love this, they took him unto them, and expounded unto him the word of God. Is that where it ends? More perfectly, completely and fully. So what's going on? Well, after the session there of his teaching in the synagogue, Priscilla and Aquila walk up to Apollos, put their arm around him, brother Apollos, can we talk? Apo can we talk about the word? Apollos says, you ain't said nothing. Let's get the word. They start to expound, says, Apollos, Tell us about the word. Well, you know, we're waiting on Messiah. I, I, I know about, they said, she said, well, Messiah then came. Really? What? And he, they expounded the word of God more perfectly. But then they showed him what they learned from Paul, and Apollos ends up getting saved into the church, the body of Christ. And we learn from, Cor from 1 Corinthians, he's actually teaching in the, the assemblies there. Apollos was a grace preacher. He, he, this is how your heart should be when you hear the word of God more perfectly. They explain to him the full, complete change in the program from prophecy to mystery, from the gospel of the kingdom to the gospel of the grace of God, and Apollos didn't fight him, he believed. That's how men are supposed to do. Verse 27. And when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote exhorting the disciples to receive him, who when he was come helped them much which had believed through what? There's the Pauline grace message. Verse 28. For he mightily convinced the Jews and that publicly Shown by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. Apollos didn't waste no time. 
When I talk to people through email or, or phone calls about the word, it's usually people who I can reason with the scriptures who start to see it. It doesn't take long. If you have verses in your mind and heart, the Bible's like a 10,000 piece puzzle where you got all the jigsaw pieces there. And maybe you've been putting together a few pieces in the corner here and a few pieces here. And, and the teachers and preachers, and as your own study, you can't put the thing together. But then somebody like you and I, who know right division, come and say, you remember that piece there? Here, let me show you where that fits. Boom. They said, I see that. How about that piece? And you start to put that thing together, and it started to look like the box, and they started to see Christ according to the mystery. And they say, I see it. That's what happened with Apollos. There were some things that Apollos was thinking about that didn't make sense, and somebody came with right division, they did, Priscilla and Aquila, and gave it to him, and he says, I got it. And with the power of God's word, man, and the spirit, Apollo says, I understand what God is doing, and he preached it with power. You can, we do that now that we know right division. We're coming down to the end. Let's look at uh, the last passages about Priscilla and Aquila. Go over to 1 Corinthians 16 and 2 Timothy 4, and we'll end. 1 Corinthians 16 and 2 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Corinthians 16, if, if, if you're a couple, if you're a husband and wife today, and you're blessed enough to both be in the grace message, Priscilla and Aquila is who you're supposed to be. I know not everybody has that. There are men in the body, grace believers who wives are still at their old church. Because they, 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 I, I mentioned last week, they can't let go emotionally. I know. I've seen it time after time, and, and I pray for you. There are women who see this, and their husbands are lost, who don't care about religion, and they don't want to. I, 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 and we pray for them because we know the pain of not having your spouse in it. But if you happen to be a couple who both believe the Pauline Grace message, you're to be just like Priscilla and Aquila in your service to the Lord. And what we're going to see, they started off and were faithful to the end as husband and wife. Let's look at it. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Look at verse 19 real quick. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 19. The churches of Asia, Asia salute you, you Corinthians. Aquila and Priscilla salute you much in the Lord and the church that is in their what? Uh-huh. In Corinth, they did meet in one place like this. But as times get harder sometimes, the persecution they had to actually, they started off in small grace church. All grace churches are small. We're not any different. In the beginning, they started off in houses. As they started to grow and they grew outside of houses, like here, this was early in Paul's ministry, by the way. They started out in a house. Then they would end up meeting in one place like this. The building is not important. It's, it's what's preached in the building. If you've got a big building and you're not preaching the word rightly divided, it's, it's a mess. So they actually had a church in their house. It may get to that day in our country where one of the rich saints just has a property big enough so where we can all meet and, and, and get the word of God if, if nobody else wants to uh, rent to you or, 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 or uh, sell to you, you know, that type of stuff. Well, they did that. They, were, they had a church. They were so faithful, they, they even had a meeting place for the saints. That's what he's talking about. In the last passage... At the end of Paul's ministry, go with me to 2 Timothy chapter 4 and look at verse 19. And we'll end. 2 Timothy chapter 4, look at verse 19. Salute Prisca. By the way, he calls her Prisca here. She's an older woman now. Priscilla is like her, uh, the, the diminutive uh, for Prisca. Uh, it'll be like changing Jenny to Jennifer or, you know, she became an adult, as it were. She grew uh, in maturity. Salute Prisca and Aquila and the household of Onesiphorus. Now, I stop right there because it's just a, a salutation. But what I want you to see, the last epistle Paul wrote before he died, Nero, old Nero, cut his head off right there in Rome. These people were with the apostle Paul, faithful. They went from way years earlier following Paul, and they were faithful to the end. That tells you that God says you can and, and, and endure the sound doctrine and be in the doctrine to the end. My goal for you and I as believers, particularly married couples, is that you be like Priscilla and Aquila. 
But even if you're not a married couple, you're just a single man. Be like the Apostle Paul. Just be single and, and serve in the Lord. If you're just a single woman, be like Sister Phoebe and just give yourself over to the Lord and be faithful in Paul. Whatever it is, single man, single woman, or couple, we all can serve and be faithful to the end like these saints. And, and we're going to see more of these saints next week. Uh, not next week, the week after. We got first Sunday next week. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the truth of your word. Father, we thank you that we can just get into your word, understand it, rightly divide it, and see our brothers and sisters in Christ who came before us in their faithfulness to the message of grace. Oh, Father, my prayer for the saints here, that no matter where they are, Father, married, single, male or female, a bond or free when it comes to finances or things like that, Father, we just pray that we use everything that we have, like these brothers and sisters before us, towards your ministry of grace and getting that word out to others. May we all be as faithful as these saints who didn't even know they were going to be in the Bible. That's funny to me. They didn't realize they were going to be in Scripture. They did it with a heart attitude of faith towards you and your son, the Lord Jesus. May we all do that. As we uh, go forth into this lost and dying world, may we be faithful lights as our, as our brothers before us and sisters before us. We thank you in Christ's name. Amen.